Hi, I'm Dr. Nick Buecher at North Seattle Community College, and I'm here today to talk to you about the titration method. So titration is a stoichiometric technique. In its most fundamental form, what we're going to be doing is taking a chemical of known concentration, known as the titrant, and reacting with a chemical of unknown concentration, known as the analyte, in order to establish the concentration of the analyte. Some of you will be exploring more advanced titration techniques in the general chemistry series involving pH and or redox reactions. But today we're gonna to focus on a simple form of titration. So let's begin by talking about some of the equipment that'll be involved. The first six items that you'll be using can be found in your lab drawer. We have beakers or Erlenmeyers that are going to be used to hold our analyte during the titration. I prefer the Erlenmeyer because the narrow neck helps reduce or prevent splashing. We have two more Erlenmeyers over here that are going to hold our titrant and our analyte. Notice that I've clearly labeled those because this experiment involves multiple clear liquids and it can be difficult to keep them uh, differentiated from each other without clearly labeling your containers. Shown right here, we have our magnetic stir bar. And then finally, our funnel. The funnel is going to be very useful for adding fluid to the narrow neck of our burette, which I'll be showing later on in the video. This item right here is known as a burette clamp. It can be found in a cupboard at the side of the classroom. I'll be demonstrating its operation later. Right here, we have a volumetric pipette. This is a device that's used to measure out volume of liquid very, very accurately. Be careful when you're handling them because they are delicate and expensive. Shown right here is the pipette pump. Here we have our pH indicator, which can be found in the car. This indicator is phenolphthalein. It's perhaps the most commonly used pH indicator. Your chemicals will likely be found on the cart at the front of the room in bottles such as these. Um, uh, right here we have our analyte, and then here our titrant. Now I'd like to show you a very important piece of glassware. What we have right here is the burette. This is going to be used to measure the volume of our titrant. It's got markings on the side of the narrow glass cylinder in order to measure volume. A stopcock is located at the bottom in order to turn the flow of titrant on and off. And we have a narrow tip down here. When using the burette, be very careful not to chip the narrow tip or the top of burette. Again, these are expensive and delicate and easily damaged. Finally, I would like to demonstrate the use of the squeeze bottles that are used to dispense the chemicals in this lab. What you want to do is gently lift the top of the bottle, if it's not already been lifted, and then squeeze. And you'll see the reservoir begin to fill with fluid. The reservoir has markings on the side that can be used to obtain rough volume measurements. Go. I've created here an example titration setup. Let's start at the base right here. We'll discuss the stir plate. The stir plate can be found on the counter in front of you. It has both heating as well as stirring knobs on the front. For this experiment, we will not be using the heating feature, so be sure you do not turn the heat on. We'll only be using the stir feature. Behind the hot plate or stir plate, we have the post. The post can be found in the counter. You'll see a small cylinder of metal sticking up above the, above the counter. You want to remove it and invert it reinsert it into the hole, and that is how you end up with the post. 
Attached to the post, we have our burette clamp. Notice how it's secured to the post. This thumb wheel right here is used to secure the post to the center of the burette clamp. To the side of the burette clamp, we have the burette. These pinchers right here are used to secure the burette to the clamp. We'll begin by talking about how to operate the stopcock of the burette. When the stopcock bar is horizontal, that indicates that the valve is completely closed. If it is vertical, it is completely on, and a very rapid flow of fluid will come out of the burette. And if you have it at some sort of angle, you can throttle the flow of fluid up or down. I would turn the valve off because I'm about to rinse the burette. I'm going to take the burette out of the clamp here, and I'm going to insert a funnel into the top of it, facilitate addition of fluid. I'm going to take a small amount of the titrate, 5 to 10 milliliters, approximately, and I'm going to use this to rinse the burette. I'm going to remove the funnel. And then I'm trying to gently rock and rotate the burette in order to try and flush out any contamination that might be in there from a previous group using it. Once I've finished this rinsing process, I'm going to use our temporary waste container here to hold our fluid. I'm going to open the stopcock and drain out this rinse titrant. Now that I've finished the rinse process, I'm going to close the valve once again, and I'm going to insert the funnel, and then I'm going to fill the burette up to nearly the top of the markings. You don't want to go beyond the markings, because if you go beyond the markings, you will not be able to get an accurate volume measure. From here, it's important to get the air bubble, bubble out of the tip of the burette. I want to place it up here into our burette clamp once more. I'm going to take our waste container, and in order to get the air bubble out of the tip, I'm going to briefly turn it on to a blast for about a second or two, and the bubble should be gone. <laughs> 